Hey, wonderful people, we're back here talking about narcissism. I'm your guy, Frank. Well, today we're going to be talking about what all these videos are for. How, why get out information into the world about narcissism? What's the end game of all this? Where are we trying to go? Before we get into it, you know, if you like these kind of videos, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let's get this message out. Let's It helps the channel out, and I'm terribly grateful. But it also helps other people get the, the message out and learn about narcissism and not get ensnared by narcissism, right, or get out of it. It really helps people. Just hitting the like button helps people because it grows their channels, and then their channels can reach more people and help more people. So let's get right into it. What is this whole thing on YouTube about getting um, narcissism out to the public for this channel, for me? Well, obviously so that they can learn about narcissism before they get into it. Learn what all the red flags are when you start meeting people. Um, know what, where the direction of a narcissistic relationship goes. Not good, right? What it's going to be like. Why you shouldn't want to be in one. Why you shouldn't uh, flirt with the decision of being in one. And if you're in one, to plan to get out of one. Yeah, because if you know what this looks like, you can avoid it. It's just, and the narcissistic game is not complicated. They're not complicated. They're not rocket scientists. They're, they have a very set bundle of rules that they play by and that's it and I try and break it down really easy I try and give um, uh, models that people can follow to kind of uh, know what's going on in a relationship with a narcissist and the red flags like I call them a magician or I say they're on their own mental battlefield then not only are you going to be able to have all the, the red flags, know what they look like early on when you get into a relationship, whether it's a romantic relationship or a business relationship or just a friendship with somebody, you're going to know what that looks like, right? So well, we know what other types of people look like um, that we don't want in our life, like, you know, bombastic a-hole types, right? We just kick them to the curb. Because we're not, we don't have time for that. But a narcissist doesn't do it like that. They kind of come in and they got the mask on and say, hey, I'm a nice person. <laughs> and they kind of let you know what they are a little at a time and to see if you will accept their nonsense, if you'll accept the game that they want to play. And when you know the red flags, you can decide if that's you you'll know that what they're doing is that exact thing you'll know that they're testing you to see if they could be more abusive to you in the future and then when you know all about narcissism you know how this is going to play out how narcissistic relationships play out it's not good <laughs> and because you know how it plays out. That's part of knowing that you're never going to heal them. You're never going to convince them. You're never going to get through to them. They're never going to have an epiphany moment where they go, oh, you're right about everything. Jeepers creepers, I've been wrong. <laughs> you know, It's never going to happen. You're not going to heal them. You're not going to, you're not a therapist. Even if you were a therapist, it would probably not going to happen. It's, you're probably not going to heal them, heal them, right? Fix them because they don't want to be healed. They don't see that they have a problem. They see everybody else has a problem. Why would they want to be healed? Why would they want to be fixed? Why would they want to go through therapy? They don't have anything. They don't feel that there's anything wrong with themselves. So you're never going to fix them. It's a bad situation. It's a intolerable relationship. And when you see the flags, the red flags, you can go, you can make a decision on if you want to suffer that much or you want to move on to the next relationship. But it gets deeper than that. Because if you're in a relationship with a narcissist, and a lot of people are, because they fell for it. They didn't know that, normally people don't know that these 
types of people are walking through society. You know, we expect to be able to see people that we don't like, that we don't want. The regular person doesn't know what narcissism is. They don't know what the signs are. They fall for it all the time. We fall for it all the time. We see great people out in public and don't know that they're narcissists. We've all done it. So if you're in a narcissistic relationship, if you're in a relationship with a narcissist, you'll eventually know that your goal is to be gone, to be out of that relationship, to get as much distance as that relationship will allow you to, you know, and some people decide to stay in a relationship but get a lot of distance from it because they can't leave, say, if they have, you know, if they're married with three kids with the narcissist, do they really, and they're young kids, do they, you know, they can't just take everything and leave or they feel like they can't, or maybe they can't, you don't know what the society norms are, and then there's a, they have their, their marital issues, their money issues, and oh, family issues, and religious issues that are all packaged and intertwined. People just can't drop everything and leave. But they can get as much distance from the narcissist as possible, right? The three distances, physical distance, uh, psychological distance, and mental distance. And even if you're living with the narcissist, you can expand these distances. You can get away from the narcissist by... Um, physically get away from them by doing other things outside the house. And usually that, that fixes a lot of the problems uh, as far as the physical distance. And then you've got to work on your psychology and then you've got to work on getting the, uh, getting the narcissist out of your head. Stop running arguments about uh, how unfair it was for what they did and how they should have done something else out of your head. But we're not going to go into that today. And if you're in a relationship with a narcissist, you might decide to break it off. Or honestly, at some point, it's going to end. At some point, it's going to end. Uh, somebody will pass away or somebody will move away or something will happen and the relationship will end. And you'll know that that is the ultimate cure for a narcissistic relationship is that distance. And honestly, when you break away from a narcissist, you divorce a narcissist um, or something like that along those lines, no contact, right? No contact, like they never existed. And sometimes you have to cut off the people that the narcissist uses to run an end around you and your blocks, to get around your blockages and get back to you. You have to cut those people off too. Anyway, that's a whole nother video. <laughs> But yeah, once we get the word out on how all this works, people can foresee it and decide where and what they need to do. Now, eventually, <laughs> right? eventually, eventually, it might take a while, everybody or just about everybody will know where the narcissist is. Think about it. Everybody knows what an a-hole is, right? A, 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 an abuser is. Everybody knows what these are. So why can't, we can also know what narcissists are. Just like it's a common thing, we all know. We all know the red flags, we all know the things, like we all know lightning, or we all know what it looks like when somebody's choking, right? They go like this, they can't breathe. We all know these things. So why can't we know about a narcissist and all their red flags? There's no reason why, and it's very simple. So I'm looking down at my notes because I have notes on this one. <laughs> From now on, I'm using notes because I go off on tangents. I have way too much to say. And once everybody knows what the deal with a narcissist is, 99.9% .9 probably aren't going to want to be around a narcissist. They're going to say, whoa, red flag, narcissist, no thanks. On to the next romantic relationship. Whoa, no thanks during the job interview. Looks like you're a narcissist. Really don't want to get into that territory with our employees and our business. Thanks, we'll call you. Not. And this will happen again and again. And eventually, we'll get to a place where narcissists are kind of ostracized in society. Where people aren't being with the narcissist. Not in a mean way. Not in a retributional way. Um, we're not trying to hurt them. It's, we're trying to 
make it so they don't hurt us. And they are going to be by themselves. Oops, my camera started to go dark. They're going to be by themselves. Now, sometimes they can choose two things, right? They can choose to be by themselves or they can choose to um, be with other people. But since everybody knows their tricks, they're going to have to seek therapy. They're going to have to. It's almost the only way that a narcissist can turn things around. So those are the two options that are going to be available to them when everybody knows their tricks. And there are a lot of narcissists that are completely happy being by themselves, but most narcissists are not because they need that narcissistic supply. They don't feel good without other people to put down, to feel superior to, or at least to kind of echolocate where they are in the world. They, they know where they are in the world by how other people react to them. And that'll be gone if there's nobody else around because everybody knows their tricks, everybody else said no thanks, or um, they were in a relationship with them and they found out how to get out. Once you realize, once you are, if you're in a, re, if you're in a narcissistic relationship and you realize that this has a label and has a whole thing behind it and it's a real thing, it changes the game for you. It changes the game for you. All of a sudden you feel not crazy, right? It's not you. It's not your perception. And all the magic tricks that the narcissist had start to fall away. It's kind of like when you're a child and a magician comes out and he pulls the card out of a hat or whatever. But you get older and you realize the magician is the magician and they're going to do tricks and it's all sleight of hand. Uh, but before you realize that, you fall for just about everything they do. But when you realize it's a magician, here we go, here comes the act, you can either choose to go into it or not to go into it. And that's how we're going to be. I mean, most of the people are obviously going to choose not to go into it. So there's going to be a lot of narcissists that are alone. And if they want to come back, if they want to re-enter society, they're going to have to go through some kind of uh, therapy and work on themselves. So now we're at a place where most narcissists have been um, sidelined and they either are working on themselves. Yes, it could be in a distant future. It could be 100 years from now, right? But we're working on it, right? I don't think it takes that long. I really don't think it takes that long. We've seen things in our society go viral and everybody winds up learning about it really quickly. I think this, is, this can happen too. So eventually we're gonna to get to a point in society where everybody knows all the narcissistic tricks and is able to notice them in children really young and step in and help those children not develop narcissism. And the adults that have it can be treated as well. And eventually the adults that have it and don't want any treatment because they see themselves better than everybody else, they're a narcissist, they'll die off eventually. So eventually you're going to come to, society will come to a point where we're turning out less and less narcissists every generation to a point where, yes, there are no more narcissists being turned out. That is a possibility. I mean, that's what we're headed towards. I know it sounds like this idealistic utopian society, but there are families that don't turn out narcissists. And they're big families because they have the education and the knowledge and honestly, the abilities to seek therapy, to head things off before they get out of hand. As a society, we're going to have to do, we're going to have to be proactive on this as individuals and as a whole in society. So yes, the idea of all this education is to eventually evolve society to where we have no narcissists in society. And what a great society that'll be. I mean, narcissism doesn't help the narcissist and it certainly doesn't help anybody else. It's a sort of a disease in society. It's a psychological disease in society that just keeps on giving, right? Narcissists turn out other narcissists. 
narcissists also turn out narcissistic behaviors in people that aren't actually narcissists. They don't have NPD, but they see things that the narcissist does and they're like, oh, I'll do that too because it worked for them. So yeah, that's where we're headed with all this knowledge. And that's why, that's, I don't know, maybe it's in vain, but that's why I push this out into society. I'm helping maybe one person a video, two people a video, I don't know, and to what degree, I don't know. But I think if we all get on board, if this becomes more and more of a talking point, if it becomes more and more viral, uh, we will all, as a society, raise above this issue of these, these destructive people being cranked out in society like link sausages and just let Rome terror on society. And it's not, I'm not overstating it. Ask people who have lived in narcissistic relationships. It is absolutely terrible. And they, they keep you in their relationship by shrinking you down, by making you less of a person, less sure of yourself, less sure of your perceptions, less sure of your confidence. You know, it's not like it's a free reign, free will situation. They constantly chip away at your ability to leave. It's dangerous. And just like we have uh, education about other dangers in the society, we need to be educated about this. I don't know if it's going to, uh, what I would like, I don't know if it's gonna, there's going to be a PSA on like Sesame Street or something. I would like to see a Narcissism Awareness Day. One day or a Narcissism Awareness Month, right? Where we gather knowledge on this, we talk about it, and we look at it, and we go over the the red flags, the symptoms, the fact that you're not you're never going to get through to them, and how to get out of these relationships, right? We have other days. We have Autism Awareness Day. That's great. But what about the amazingly destructive narcissistic personality disorder day? I'm just saying. Uh, I'm probably going to start a petition at some point <laughs> and get it in there. Let's go, people. Let's do this. Let's get healed from... I'm healing myself with these videos, and I'm trying to heal other people with these videos. And I, I think we will get to a point where we are healing society with these videos, and then now we're not cranking out narcissists anymore. And we're helping narcissists, and we're helping ourselves. We're just helping the whole world. This is all good. This knowledge is all good. It's not meant to be... Um, uh, attacking narcissists, although they attack us a lot, and I do make a lot of jokes at their expense. <laughs> hey, it's it's fair game. So one day I'm hoping that we'll have like something like a Narcissism Awareness Day or Narcissism Awareness Month, where everybody talks about all the red flags, where ha and where a narcissistic relationship goes, what it's like to live in that kind of a hellish relationship. The fact that you're never going to fix the narcissist and your best option is some kind of distance from the narcissist. And helping narcissists and people with narcissists in their lives. And then we will eventually move on with healing the whole world from the abuse that has gone on and is, continues to go on, and then stop turning out new narcissists. We'll be able to recognize it early in childhood. So I hope this helps people. This is what we're trying to do here. This is the mission statement of the channel. We're trying to help the world move away from narcissists at the personal level and the national level and eventually the planetary level. It's, uh, yeah, it's, that's, it's a big, <laughs> it's a big thing, but eventually I believe it will really happen. I really do believe that eventually it will happen. We have families that don't have it and then eventually we'll have towns that don't have it and cities and countries and eventually the whole world. I mean, there have been things back in the past that were evil and we did away with and now it's just a thing of the past. Now we actually laugh at that and say, how could they have put up with that? And I think one day we will be at the situation as a, as a people, as humanity, laughing and looking back and saying, why, didn't, why did they put up with narcissism? 
why did they let people become narcissistic? They had the abilities to, to see it, to treat it early in life. Why did they put up with that? I don't know. But here we are. I'm not putting up with it. I hope you don't. Uh, we're going to live our best lives today. So let's get on with it. Thank you. And uh, if you haven't liked this video or subscribed, go ahead. Come on. Let's get the word out, people. Let's live our best lives. Let's go.